And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Judges chapter 16 verse 20. Samson was a man who was greatly used by God to judge the enemies of God. His birth is unusual. He is given the honor of having his birth announced by the angel of God. The one who came to Samson's mother was the second person of the Godhead, the pre-incarnate Christ. Great things were in store for Samson. There was excitement and great promise for this boy, for God himself come to announce his birth. The Nazarite vow was taken for a voluntary period of time. But Samson was to be a Nazarite for life. He was to be dedicated to and consecrated to God for life. Not only was he to live a special life of dedication to God, but also to live a special life of delivering God's people. What makes Samson's story so compelling and interesting is all of the mighty deeds he does. Here was a man who could single-handedly catch 300 foxes and use them to destroy the farms of the enemy. With a jawbone of a donkey, he slew a thousand soldiers. He quenched his thirst with water that flowed out of the jawbone. Samson did the work of the Lord through the power of the Spirit that rested mightily upon him. But then we read of the other side of Samson, his failings. Samson was one who was empowered by the Spirit, yet also one who was dominated by the flesh. Why do we take time to study the lives of people in the Bible? Paul says. Now, these things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us, on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. Because like Samson, God has also called us and given us a special mission, to bring glory to him. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20, For you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. And the prophet Isaiah says, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made, Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7. We are called to live as his holy people. For he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his presence, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. We are called to share his message of salvation, as we are told in 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 9 to 12. To enable us to carry out this work for God, we have been empowered by the Holy Spirit who lives in us. So in effect, it is God who is working in, and through us to bring glory to himself. So the same power that was available for Samson and the other prophets to do exploits, is the same spirit that lives in us today. We are to go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit to make disciples for Christ. I have heard some Christians claim they do not have the Holy Spirit. Well, if you do not have the Holy Spirit then you never were a Christian in the first place. Paul told the Romans in Romans chapter 8 verse 9. You, however, are not in the flesh but in the Spirit, if in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Anyone who is born again has the Holy Spirit living in them. We cannot give to the world what we don't have. We cannot do the work of God in the power of our might. We cannot win souls with the eloquence of our mouth. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. But unfortunately, like Samson, many of us are empowered by the Spirit, yet also we are dominated by the flesh. Like the Galatians of Paul's time, many of us started our Christian journey in the Spirit but are now operating in the flesh. Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Galatians chapter 3 verse 3. When we take out the Holy Spirit we have neither church nor Christianity. Both are the creation of the Holy Spirit. Paul says, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3. It is not what you say to an unbeliever that causes him or her to believe in Christ. They can never open their mouths to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. Jesus said, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, John chapter 6 verse 44. Simply put, if God doesn't draw the unbeliever, they would never come to Christ. The natural man has no ability to come to God, nor does he even have the desire to come. This is because his heart is hard and his mind is darkened, the unregenerate person doesn't desire God and is actually an enemy of God. How does God draw unbelievers to himself? First, the Holy Spirit convicts unbelievers of their sinful state and their need for a savior. And when he, the Holy Spirit, comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment, John chapter 16 verse 8. Second, he awakens in them an interest in, and a desire for spiritual things which never existed before in the unbeliever. The ears of the unbeliever are now open, 
and their hearts are inclined toward God. So we see that the unbeliever suddenly begins to have a new and exciting fascination for God and His Word. The spirit of the unbeliever begins to discern spiritual truth that hitherto made no sense to them. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2.14. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. When we take out the Holy Spirit, there will be no new birth. When we substitute the work of the Holy Spirit with eloquence and philosophy, there is no new birth. We need more of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in our churches. If we are to effectively carry out the commission we have been given, then we need Spirit-filled Christians. Unfortunately, many believers have unseated the Holy Spirit from the throne of our hearts. And just as the Spirit departed from Samson, many of us do not even know the glory of God has departed from our lives. And so like Samson, we tell ourselves, I will shake myself up like before and defeat the Philistines. Only to realize that the power is gone. I believe the word Ichabod, the glory has departed, should be written on our foreheads. Because all that we are doing is being done completely in the flesh. It is time to cry out. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Psalm chapter 85 verse 6. We must go on our knees, confess and repent for the Lord to shower his righteousness upon us again. The world will be ablaze for God only when you and I, as believers, are ablaze for him. Our prayer should be. Lord send a revival amongst your people and let it start with me. Send your Shekinah glory into the midst of your people again. Stir up your spirit within us. In my line of work, I used to travel around, and found myself in Wida, in the Republic of Benin in West Africa. This tiny town is dubbed the birthplace of voodoo. I must say I was one of those comfortable Christians, at that time, you know, go to church on Sunday, keep out of big trouble, and you are okay type. But my brief visit to Wida changed my perspective on the power of the supernatural. For there, right in front of my eyes, I see the physical manifestation of power by the voodoo priests and priestesses. I remember asking myself at one time, how does one introduce the gospel to a people so steeped in such beliefs? Then I remembered the prophet Elijah and the manifestation of the power of God with the priests of Baal. And I recall reasoning with myself that, how I wish a prophet of God will come here to challenge these priests. If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him, 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 21 and the confession of the people when God's power was manifested. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Verse 39. It is only the Spirit of the Lord that can draw unbelievers to God. The academic scripts, which we call sermons these days would not make a dent in the midst of such people. They have seen the power of Baal, and the things Baal can do. The world needs to see what the Holy Spirit can do when it convicts them of sin and unrighteousness. And we have been commissioned by Jesus to go in the power of the Holy Spirit to make disciples from all nations. In your home, there are family members who are enslaved by the evil one. They need spirit-filled encounters to set them free. Let us lay aside every sin that is so hindering our work for the Lord. Let us begin to walk in the Spirit and the Lord would rain down the revival that is so desperately needed in our lives, our homes, and our communities. Jesus said, It is the Spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are Spirit, and they are life, John chapter 6 verse 63. Paul added, The kingdom of God is not a matter of talk but of power. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 20. Let us begin to operate in the power of the Spirit of the Lord. The same Jesus, who died and rose again, and was given all authority in heaven and earth. He is the same person who commands us to go and preach the gospel to all creation. And he is the same person who says he will be with us until the end of the age. It is he who with all the authority of heaven and hell behind him said. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Mark chapter 16 verses 17 to 18. And it is by this same Holy Spirit, the same power that raised Christ from the dead, that we shall see sin defeated in our lives, and we could live a holy life, set apart unto the Lord. And it is by this same Spirit that we will turn the world upside down for Christ. If you have been blessed by this message support our work by subscribing and sharing it with friends and family. Thank you.
God bless you. Amen.